Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. This video is in response to Nathan Jones's top five Blu-ray labels that he collects, uh, where he asked what were the listeners or viewers' top five Blu-ray labels. So if you haven't checked out the original video, I'll put it down in the description. But this, these are my five, and, and I will say that they are all UK or European labels. They're all Region B. I haven't been able to venture far enough out into there's enough releases here in the UK without having to venture across and, and testing my budget even further by going into some of those uh, beautiful Kino Lorber sets etc that, that there are. So with that in mind I'll, I'll give my outline for my reasons for picking each of these. So for most cases it will be a case of a combination of quality of the catalogue that they're going to release so the, the films that they tend to pick from or that they deliver and then the quality of the the releases that they put together and that can be in terms of extras it can be in terms of packaging it can be all those things kind of meld into one and I'll, I'll do much like Nathan I'll start off with a honorable mention pile so most of these again are based on the fact that I haven't got a lot of them certainly in comparison to some of the other labels that we have so things I want to mention go to second run. I only have about four or five titles from second run and they're all great so far. Um, I'm very heavy on Czech New Wave as far as I can see. Um, but I watched Curling. I've done a video on Curling before and I have Neon Bull etc that are, that are down there as well. So I have this to watch. This is my watch pile for the next few days. This is the recent release Distant Journey. And I'm well looking forward is probably the wrong words to say for that because... Um, it's heavy watching I'm sure given the subject content or where it was from so that's the first one second one will not be a popular one um, given that it's anime maybe some people are very droll about, about anime but I have to say anime limited releases themselves are beautiful you can spot them by the spine that are there this is your lie in April a series that I unashamedly balled at um, when I was doing but beautiful release I mean lovely hardcover there for this release and then the two discs that are inside uh, their releases I just find are, are just super high quality they tend to pick a good selection of stuff not that I buy a ton of anime anymore but the odd release I will pick up and if I am I usually like to make the, the spans line up with the anime limited but there as well another one artificial eye artificial eye tend to do world cinema recent films so uh, I mean, I've got a couple of releases here. I've got Waltz with Bashir, which is phenomenal. And then one of my all-time favourite films, actually, uh, by Park chan uh, which is The Handmaiden, which even came with a slipcover. Um, th this film, if you haven't seen it, wowzers. I, mean, I absolutely adore this this movie. Um, but they tend to be light on extras. So they tend to present the film, subtitles, that kind of stuff, but not really much more else. There are some exceptions to that, but that's pretty much what the releases are, which is why they rank for their further down also in the honorable mentions is second sight i don't have very many of those i don't have any of their hard cover although i do have a couple coming to me but uh i have the anim reanimator one their releases are, are good I, I i do like the black case actually i think it lets them stand out and gives them some um some individuality or identity um but i've, I've only got the reanimator so that's the only one that i've got for that and last but not least is 101 films um and this is the black label, so the thing of a roller coaster which has a release and a booklet. And it has some decent extras in it and their selection of choices of films are for the most part good, some a bit miss, some absolute some great films in there that I really I really am a big fan of the Grifters and, and I really like Black Book a lot. I did many years ago when I when I watched Black Book as a release. But that's my honourable mentions. As for my top five, well in fifth place comes a label that if you were to look at my recently watched list, this makes up an awful lot of that label, which means they've had a bit of a rebirth for me. And that is the BFI label. I've got two releases here, Judgment Nuremberg and Battle of the Sexes. Uh, they've just basically dropped in through the door today. Um, I do like this move to the new Skinovo case that are full of spines and not the ones missing at the top. I think it, it gives them a bit more of a premium look or otherwise. But the, the recent BFI releases especially have moved it up a notch in, in my view if you look at some of the older discs they tended to fill the extras with short films etc which is not terrible and 
In fact, Funeral Parade of Roses has lots of short films, but there's a decent audio commentary except for there as well. The restorations and picture quality of the BFI releases, especially, I think is top notch. Uh, since they do an awful lot of the restorations themselves and are funded by them. Um, but there's a slew of extras and the films that they generally pick from, they do have a remit for restoring British film, hence the likes of something like The Battle of Sexes um, and The Giddy Pig, etc., which is coming out in the next few weeks and months, which I'll definitely pick up. I want to support that because they're always interesting watches to see what those films were like in, in that time period. But they also have some world cinema in there as well. They're very, the BFI Japan season is going along at the moment, and you'll probably have seen my BFI Japan video on the channel recently if not i'll stick that in the description as well so number five is bfi and while it's number five much loved by me especially at the moment number four is uh eureka masters of cinema specifically but the eureka releases in general their classics lines great as well and masters of class masters of cinema sorry was the first table that i really got into uh silent run i think was my first one that i picked up all together yeah silent silent Sent running was it and it has a number of, I mean I don't think I've seen a bad release from Master Cinema a film that I haven't liked they tend sometimes to be on the safer side of a good release so that you can turn out any western with a, a good director or a good cast on it and it'll be on without it necessarily being a classic but for instance they have a lot of uh, films like King Who uh, for instance, so the, these are two of them and, and two, you know, examples. I like the King Who films a lot um, but I would never really have gotten into if it wasn't for it. Even Touch of Zen, which I had in Criterion, I originally seen in the Masters of Cinema version. So, Masters of Cinema as a label, I tend to buy everything that they have coming out. Although I am missing a lot from earlier on in the catalogue. So, uh, there's a lot of them have now went out of print or they've lost the rights to and haven't renewed, etc. So I'm, I'm never on the push to fill that up. I'll always buy the small releases and then a couple more just to keep ticking that along and keep that catalogue filling up. And I'll, I'll put that in a, in a collection video soon. Number three. God, these top three are really hard for me um, because they really make up the enormity of, of the most of my collection in general. And I've grouped these together as Arrow, uh, with Arrow Video and Arrow Academy, both of whom I own a lot of releases for. If I start with the video, um, recent movies they've released, like I've seen The Endless here. Um, the Endless is a great movie. I, I really adored The Endless. Uh, Justin Benson and uh, Aaron Moorhead collaboration. The team is filmmakers. <laughs> I mean, it's a great disc that they put together. The extras are really interesting, the cast and crew, except the endless, but it's also a great movie. So you get to see things like that, and you also get to see classics, and they're well famed for their hardbound cases. Now, I will always pick Bird uh, with the Crystal Plumage as an example of this, because this artwork is the nicest artwork I have in my collection. This is a, a release that I, I mean, the film's pretty much as good as the artwork in many ways. I really enjoy the film, but. That, that artwork in this release that they put together with the poster and the books etc is something else and I do I might have to replace some of the pictures with the, that artwork because I, I dearly do love it but their hardbound cases releases are always very popular they always sell it pretty quickly so if you ever see one you're nearly as well picking it up before you've even seen the film because if you wait likelihood is that it's gone now, now they will have a standard release which will be the same sometimes the disc less sometimes not but that is Bird with a Crystal Plumage uh, and that's the Arrow video line uh, they also have the Arrow Academy which is steers, steers more towards the Criterion so more outhouse cinema, world cinema but there is a lot of film noir, a lot of westerns in there there's a lot of spaghetti westerns well spaghetti westerns tend to be Arrow video more but uh, that's, that just dropped in through the door so America Seen by Frenchman which is a, a documentary and then something like The Fourth Country um, which is the western uh, with Jimmy Stewart who I'm a, I'm a big fan of but again a large collection they do some absolutely incredible box sets as well so the Kieslowski box, box sets of Decalogue or Cinnamon Conflict um, uh, both stand out to me but you've got the Godard I mean the list is endless when I do my collection video you'll see all the ones that I have and Arrow Academy make, a make up a large part of my collection as well I will just about buy everything that Arrow put out 
uh, on a monthly month basis and they make up probably the biggest slice of my budget every month um, as a release but they're number three sorry Arrow love you dearly sure you love you by sending out email money number two and this is tight I've went for indicator powerhouse films indicator and what can I say about, about indicator indicator I first got in through through one of their box sets in fact it was the Sinbad box set was the first release I think I ever picked up of theirs uh, quickly followed by the two high housing high high housing box sets um, and the box sets were incredible they, they picked movies that I that I initially remembered from being as a kid so the Sinbad and, and the Mysterious Island and Jason the Argonauts etc were there but then I started exploring in and around the label itself and the label itself is made up of movies primarily from the 50s, 60s and 70s there are some examples outside of it that have went into more modern British cinema etc apart from that but around that period uh, English speaking so they are all primarily English or American releases and they're films that some people would say are forgotten uh, they are remembered by some but not by many is what I would say a lot of times including the ha Hammer releases I mean they've done five box sets so far there I assume there'll be many more and they pack them together and they're all great watches in their own right but it's the other titles that I, that I really enjoy Footsteps in the Fog um, you know the Mary Goals one. I just gotta call it my my goals with John Woodward, etc. You know, there are there's hardly a dud title in there. I mean I can list in one hand the films that I haven't thoroughly enjoyed on first watch. Uh, and the discs are absolutely packed. They're absolutely ram packed with features and there's very very rarely a disc that hasn't got at least another couple of hours worth of content for you to make your way through if you like the movie at all. So I've alluded to you before they do fantastic box sets now. Known this isn't to everybody's liking this uh, this Dietrich von Sturberg collection because of the Stimmer spines, but I really like it. The um, the other ones, the bloody terror box sets, done the same way. Some people like thick cases. I actually quite like the small one, especially when this is multiple movies like this. It's, and especially if they think something like the Samuel Fuller box set, where they have multiple discs within the one spine that you can't really see. Not a fan of that. You can see. Along the bottom they, they're all individually spined with different colors they all line up great i am nearly complete on indicator it shows how much i like them i'm missing i think six titles only one of which is out of print uh, i'm missing the big heat which is out of print so i need to pick that up i'm gonna have to overpay for it at some stage i think that's a real shame because i've seen the big heat and i like the big heat a lot which is kind of why it was always in the back burner of the things that i was going to pick up ah well what are you going to do which leads me to number one there's only really one left and that is Criterion. Uh, Criterion, to me, were the daddy of Boutique Blu-ray. They set an awful lot of this up, or at least in my consciousness. Other ones may have come beforehand, but these they were the people that, that stood out for me. And whether it's single releases, like Day for Night in Skinogo, or box sets or digipack releases, like Jackie Chan's Police Story here, uh, what, no matter what way they do it, some people don't like the Criterion artwork, especially the more recent ones. I've had conversations with people, which is fine. I think that is a big part of any attraction to ban booty. You ban a package of stuff, really. You're not just buying the film itself. But the curation of the film is really what, what I think separates Criterion apart. Their ability, especially with well-known directors, for them to say, no, I want my film released by them. I want their treatment done well. So people like Scorsese and Anderson, etc., who will want their films to be released there. Um, even even the fact that there are upcoming uh, Netflix releases or Parasites coming out wanted that to be on Criterion and get that a Criterion. It says an awful lot about, about what they do and everything. When Indicator does that 50s and 70s all English speaking, I know kind of what those type of movies are. My enjoyment levels may vary from time to time. But when I pick up a cartoon, at least I could be watching something that I never would have found any other way. It wouldn't have been on TV. It would never come across my radar otherwise. And that's why they're number number one for me. There's the Coker Trilogy as well. Sorry, back to front. Uh, which has some of the greatest artwork that you'll ever see. With the inter interfolding cases that make up the three the three windows that are inside. So, like, that's unusual. That steps outside the comfort zone 
of what they are and you get what is pretty much a premium package that you pay for. There is a premium to Criterion releases, especially in the UK where the Digipack releases are, are that more expensive. Um, but that's my top five. Let me know what yours is. Respond to Nathan's video if you want to let him know as well uh, what your top five is, but those are mine. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll speak soon. All the best. Bye.